And one thing that she she said that really stayed with me is you should really do what you love to do because at the end of the day, it's going to be a lot of work anyhow. So why put a lot of work into something that you don't want to do? And so, uh, you know, I would just encourage people to, you know, follow their passion and to keep going. And uh, and and one step always leads to the next step. Um, and just take the step. Just even if it's that first baby step, just do it. Um, not to sound like a Nike ad, but yeah. <laughs> Today on the show, we are joined with actor and musician Sean Andrews. You may know Sean from famously his role as Kevin Pickford in the film Days and Confused, which is celebrating its 30th anniversary. And we talk all about that today, as well as his new single, Ride Like Thunder. And it was just so cool to pick his brain about life as a musician, actor, what he's up to now, reflecting on the film Dazed and Confused, and tapping into his overall spiritual connection with music, acting, and overall just creating art. Was so nice to meet him, just such a chill vibe, and let's get into this conversation right now. John, nice to meet you today, how you doing? I'm doing really good, nice to meet you as well. Um, I have to say you have a great name. Oh, yeah. I agree with you as well. And uh, speaking of great things, too, I've been listening to your new song. It's absolutely awesome. And I want to dive into your music life. Um, but first, I think I want I kind of want to go uh, back in time and uh, celebrate with you today the 30th anniversary of Days and Confused. Um, that's an absolutely iconic movie. And I think what's so special about it, too, is even though like it was made in the 90s, took place in the 70s, it also like transcends all generations of people going to high school. Like I ended up watching it uh, later on in the 2000s. It really related to me. I noticed with my uh, girlfriend's little brother, he's turned 14, 15. All his friends watch Days and Confused. And I want to know, like, as you were making this film, did you have a feeling that it was going to have, like, this kind of legacy that would go on? That's a great question. Um, I mean, first and foremost, um, when I think of the film, I think gratitude. It's great to be a part of something that has, as you say, endured so incredibly long and really means so much to so many people. I think it really taps into some kind of a comfort or nostalgia. Uh, for a time and place as we're all growing up. Um, and um, it really is a testament to the filmmaker. I mean, Richard Linklater uh, and obviously Ann Walker and the casting director, Don Phillips, they really sort of caught the magic sauce. And if you think about it, um, with so much streaming today, so much content for, for anything really to resonate um, and, and still be discussed is just a huge blessing. And I'm I'm really really grateful. That's amazing. And uh, even uh, I I want to know was your high school experience kind of similar to because like when I watch the film and I see like the the acting and just there's little nuances to all the characters across that are just so real. It's like how people really talk when they're stoned. Like to your <laughs> scene of you ordering a keg of beer and hoping your parents are gone you know it's like <laughs> these are all things that would happen you know like it, when you're yeah like no it's very realistic it's very realistic I mean you know in high school um you know I was definitely just blessed to have a cool group of friends uh that you know we had a lot of fun with um and I definitely um drew from that experience you know um and I think in any role you know you hopefully you're you're trying to draw from some personal experience to sort of make a bridge or a connect you know um and uh so that definitely came in hand awesome and um after this film was released uh obviously like as we know it blew up everywhere um how did your life change where people like seeing you on the street and like just like yelling like Kevin Pickford at you and like did everything just kind of like flip upside down because it just like such a massive hit like just out of nowhere yeah, it, was a little, it was a little a little bit of a slow burn you know like mm. in the beginning but as it it has as we you know talked about really endured um I've gotten a lot of love 
you know, like even the little nuanced things that that I said or mumbled, people, you know, know know like down to the detail. Like, oh, oh yeah, I said that. You know, I couldn't. I, it's 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 very nice uh, the 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 love that I've I've gotten. I'm very grateful to the fans uh, for the film, um, and uh, it's just it really is such an incredible blessing, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's so awesome, and uh, even like it just seems like such like an exciting, like life changing time in your life too. And uh, one thing I didn't know too, like uh, this could be wrong because Wikipedia lies to me all the time, but I'm like looking around the time of the the film and it said around that year, you even got uh, married to uh, Mila Jovovich as well. Uh, did you guys meet at the on set or was it like uh, around that or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, um, she was, she was definitely like my first love, you know, mm -hmm. we were definitely really young. It was, a very young person's choice, <laughs> but no regrets, you know, I learned a lot from it. Yeah, definitely. And I can imagine too, going through an experience of like making a film with somebody it's uh, it's beyond even what we see the time and work. Like it's almost like the cast and crew becomes like a second family too. And to have like this experience. And even though it was like a short, like marriage you had, it's you guys went through something life-changing that uh, a lot of people never experience in their life too. So I can imagine that kind of fueled the fire between you two. Yeah, no, it was, you know, like I said, she, I think she's an amazing person and she's for sure my, for me, I can't speak for her, but she was mm -hmm. definitely my first love. And um, yeah, it was a great experience, you know, like, um, uh, and I, I definitely learned a lot from it, you know? Yeah, that's really cool. And uh, over the years, uh, have you uh, caught up with any of the other cast members? Like, uh, have, do you, is there a couple people you keep in touch with or anything like it's, that? It's crazy. Like, you know, like out and about here in, in, in L.A., like, you know, it's, it's actually a very small town. And um, if I see somebody that, you know, that we made that particular film with, it's always nice to catch up, like seeing an old high school friend. Cool, cool. And um, even over the years, I, I noticed uh, you've, you've been very selective with your acting roles, kind of like spreading out and just kind of like, uh, let me know a little bit about like your career and uh, the, the reasons why you come back to acting. Is it like your full passion? Do you only like to do it like once in a while or like kind of what's your yeah, philosophy Yeah, I mean, I on think it? that I was, as you say, pretty selective about doing sort of very um, character driven uh, films. Um, uh, sort of particular, I was you know, mentored by Arthur Penn at Actor Studio, who really had suggested to me to take my time and not like try to just cash in on the quick um, search um, mm -hmm. and kind of go more for the, the the marathon and the sprint, so to speak. And um, and his mentorship really helped me. And I definitely think that. Um, you know, fortunate enough to do, you know, movies like Fix with Olivia Wilde and Megalyn Echigwake, which, um, you know, Oliver Stone gave a lot of love to. It's kind of a pretty cool sort of film festival award winning film about addiction and family. I'm very grateful for that opportunity. And then very, I was also fortunate to be the lead also in a movie called Big Heart City, opposite Oscar nominee Seymour Cassell, um, which is a really cool movie. Dennis Hopper gave that movie a lot of love. And Oh, awesome. um, and also uh, another really cool movie uh, I was able to do was with Matt Dillon's directorial debut called City of Ghost. Um, he shot that in Cambodia. And that was like, again, one of those life changing opportunities to, to see that country and to have that experience was pretty spectacular. And so, you know, and of course, um, you know, with the writer strike right now, and I'm 100 percent behind all the writers and all the artists. 100% supportive. Um, probably the next time you'll see me is in a music video. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, um, you know, other than that, I, my writing producing partner and I are working on a really cool project that my management company is also now involved in. And, you know, as when it's time uh, to talk more about it as it evolves, I will absolutely, um, you know, get into that. Um, but we're hoping to work with a good female director, you know, like a, a Sophia Coppola or Greta Gerwig or Catherine Bigelow or Amanda Wade or Autumn Wilde, that kind of a person. But until it's further along and, and I can talk more about it, it's probably best just to to give more of a tease and a talk about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Exciting times. And uh, 
throughout your life has acting and music always coincided together have like, you been making music uh, even around the days we were introduced to you at days and confused yes. yeah i was actually making music first oh, that's cool. always kind of been sort of my 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 main thing and then as acting took off music sort of became like a, a personal self-expression um, you know, and I would work with really cool musicians out here that were studio level musicians in a very cocooned environment um, and for, for quite quite a while. And then I started to have very vivid dreams of songs. Um, and I would go to bed and dream of a song, um, write it down, go back to bed and the song would complete itself. And I kind of felt like, okay, I better lean into this. This I felt like, okay, this is something that I I need to start sharing with people. And that's when it, it went to the next level and very fortunate um, and blessed to work with wonderful people. Uh, the producer engineer of, of the tracks is Matthew Rucker, who's in a cool band called Quitting Whitney. Shout out to that band and really mentored by um, the legendary Howie Weinberg, who's the best of the best in mastering music. He's in the Laurel Canyon area here with me. He's done Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Jeff Buckley, like over 20 Grammys, um, wow. I think over 100 gold records. And he really pushed me. He mentored me. He really he really saw where I was going with it and really has and does sort of take the mentorship role. And I've been very fortunate to have people like that in my career that really have, I like to call them almost like angels that, that, that come along at a certain time and really kind of help you on your pathway. Um, and, and that really is how it's now like, gone to this this uh, next step where you know the first single is released right like thunder and thank you for saying that you really like it it's a lot to me mm -hmm. um and you know the video is now out too uh, directed by the very talented charles owens um and sort of captures the feel of that song nicely um and you can catch that on vivo of course it's on spotify and tiktok and youtube yeah and youtube yeah and i think all, all the good all the good places Please check it out. Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. Even uh, what I love about the song, too, it does feel like this classic rock like throwback but also kind of got like a modern spin on it i guess it's a kind of hard to explain like it feels like very natural coming from you and um i i take it obviously like a lot of like your influences are from that style the classic rocks but what were like some of the stuff uh you grew up listening to yeah you're you're, you're spot on it's definitely sort of a hat tip to the late 60s early 70s and it for sure has doors vibes and you can hear the rose mm -hmm. organ in there um, but but it's a retro sort of like rock anthem and um, very grateful it's getting the love it's getting um, some of my influences back then you know were, were some of the people that I had mentioned before um, I mean like I first started out uh, my like first record uh, and on a previous interview I answered this but and it started to make me think about it a little bit was Elvis's uh, 30 number one gold hits I believe that's what I had. I used to play that record and drive my parents nuts and oh, just cool. over and over again. And then, you know, uh, a lot of my friends had like like older brothers would get in their cars and start, you know, get introduced to like ACDC, you know, and start in Black Sabbath and then, you know, nice, yeah. uh, The Doors and, you know, and just stuff like that. And um, it all sort of evolved. But I mean, I love all kinds of music. Like, um, if it's if it's something that turns me on, whether it's it's rock or it's like like even like some country or classical, like if it's a rap, like if it's good, I'm I'm in. You know, like if it turns me on, I'm totally into it. Yeah, so you're more like uh, just based on energy instead of some people like to categorize themselves their like personality into genres. But I kind of relate to you too. If it's it doesn't matter if it's hip hop, metal, like if I'm just feeling that energy, it's like yeah. I'm gonna connect with it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm definitely out of the box. <laughs> yeah. Even um, I think what's cool, too, is uh, kind of like your vocal style. Like I'm talking to you right now. You're like you're just such like a chill dude. But then you hear you on the track and you're just kind of like belting these lyrics and stuff. Uh, let me know a little bit like how like music has been a release to you, because I totally relate to like different projects where maybe some people see me like a certain cadence and then you just kind of put out like this other type of energy into whatever your work is. Yeah, no, it's, it definitely is like music is, um, I mean, like 
I went like the first time you, you connect to a song, it's like, I mean, um, it's spiritual. I know not to sound like, you know, hokey, but it's almost otherworldly, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it, 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 it helps you go to a place or a time in your life uh, or connect a place or time in your life. And, you know, and that's certainly with this album, what I'm hoping for is that, you know, that people make a memory to ride like thunder. You know what I mean? They get in the car, they turn it up, uh, and, you know, and they, they make a memory, you know, it's, um, or it brings them back to a time, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that's what music, you know, does. And some of the other tracks, you know, something Howie said to me is that the album is, it's really different. It's not just the straightforward sort of classic rock um, sound of Ride Like Thunder. Some of the other songs are, though they have rock elements, are really approached, uh, you know, in a, in a different way. I'm, some of them are like a fever dream. Um, and some of them, you know, it's, it's hard to talk about music and not hear music, but mm -hmm. but they're so different, and um, and hopefully you know people will really enjoy the rides, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm intrigued to listen to the whole thing, and uh, I thought it was cool with the uh, ride like thunder to uh, just watching the music video. It kind of had uh, like a certain spirit to it, like the type of visuals you select, whether it's just like fast driving or people like skydiving and just. Uh, even the, like just connecting to that title too. Uh, do you want to like let us know a little bit about like the meaning of the song or the philosophy behind it? For sure. I mean, definitely. Again, you know, these songs almost felt like downloads. They're not written as like audio biographical approach. And I totally respect and love when people wrestle with their stuff, not only music, but like as artists in general, in whatever medium. But th this definitely felt like a download. But for me, the song is like finding that gear that we all have, that unspoken gear, you, you know, to push past fear. You see athletes do it all the time, you know, where it doesn't look so good for them, but they have another gear. Mm -hmm. And that's the ride like thunder gear. That's the, that's the, you know, sort of the, we all have it inside of us. It, it should be inspiring. Like, you know, it's kind of like the boxer that you think's counted out and gets up and knocks his opponent out, you know what I mean? Or the skateboarder who like wants to do a trick and pushes through and does it for, and it can be in any area of your life, but it's definitely about pushing past fear and it's about finding the gear. For me, that's what that song inspires, but it, it should be for anyone, you know, whatever, however they connect to it, you know? Mm -hmm. I love it. I love that so much. Uh, just such a good message to you. And sometimes, uh, whether it's in a song or a movie, you need to that reminder that that gear exists, it, like yeah. once in a while, because like, I find like just going through life, like the human experience, your flame can dim. But uh, that's like, what's beautiful about art and like, just anything like sometimes you just get that little spark whether you hear a song or see a scene. And I think it's cool you both you do both like movies and film together and do you also feel that spiritual side when you uh, make movies as well yeah absolutely i mean i think that when it for me personally speaking and i know talking about process for people is sometimes nauseating but um but for me personally because you asked uh i do think that 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 it's all spiritual like when it's really good i think there's a form of sort of channeling um and and they're and they're like sometimes gifts i mean definitely there's a structure and there's a discipline and technique and all that but sometimes that stuff gets in the way you know what i mean and you know like it's it's it is a form of channeling and and you know, almost if you can surprise yourself when you're when you're creating something mm -hmm. um you're surprised yourself and that's when it gets excited a little dangerous and a little exciting yeah. you know what i mean it's not so paint by numbers mm -hmm. that's facts too even to go back to what you said earlier too, how uh, you mentioned like you started writing a song and maybe imagine the rest of it in a dream. I think that's just so cool. That's just kind of like whether that's just like tapping into like your subconscious. I feel like that's just a meant to be thing. Like it's almost uh, yeah. whether it's true or not. Like I believe that means that's got to be part of like your path or whatever and it's cool Absolutely. to see you going full force uh with this and having a new album come out as well thank you so much i really appreciate it and uh, thank you you know for uh giving the song love um 
it's it's nice to hear. You know, it's been really nice to hear people's excitement about that track. You know, they really seem to be connecting to it. We're really grateful for it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I just think it's so cool. And I'm sure like uh when a lot of people meet you too, like you were such this iconic character <laughs> in a lot of people's high school. I'm sure like you get bombarded with just days and confused questions too. Like uh I, I do, I do, and I'm yeah. I'm grateful for it. It's a blessing. It really yeah. has, you know, in, endured and it's been a blessing to my career to have something that you know is still so relevant to so many people and so important to so many people. Like I said, with all the content out now, if you think about what the streaming services and, and like the television, which has become like independent film and film itself, um, with streaming, uh, all the streaming services combined with the television, it, there's so much content for anything to have a life is, it's a, it's a real blessing. And so, like I said, my hat's off to the filmmaker, Richard Linkletter and, and everyone really that created that film. Yeah, that's that is so true. There's just almost so much, and uh, it's it's crazy how much that just stands a test of time. And and it, yeah, it's just awesome. And it's even like I'm so like happy to just kind of hear like what you're doing now too. Uh, when I mentioned I would be talking to you, a lot of people got excited, and uh, one guy on our Patreon was like, "I I molded my whole personality after this cast too and it's just like uh they're very intrigued on what what you're up to now and it's cool to like just hear like you're on this path of music and uh still making art and that you got this album coming out and everything yeah uh, that's that's very nice to hear and i'm very grateful for the fans um they're 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 how we eat <laughs> yeah. uh, so you know absolute gratitude um and uh yeah man i'm excited we'll be teasing the next track it's called spiritual technology soon um and um step by step you know hopefully you guys will will uh, enjoy the whole album hell yeah do you plan on uh like touring any of this music or playing live as well yeah, absolutely that's that's going to be one of the great joys is is taking this music out there and touring and right now the focus is to break the the single and it's getting you know some incredible momentum and love and very grateful for that and obviously the music video which we talked about and then we're going to start teasing the next track and then introducing it and perhaps doing a music video as well and then you know as we build up um the the album for people then i think we'll start the, the process of touring but i'm absolutely all in on the tour um I, it's just something that i'm really looking forward to awesome awesome and uh with these segments too, um, I noticed like a lot of uh, creatives themselves gravitate to listen to these co conversations from the comments I get to. And maybe you as a multifaceted guy in the industry from acting to music, do you have any like certain like general advice or philosophy you give to the people who just kind of like want to pursue their dreams? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I think the best advice that that I got um, from, from my mom um, actually just recently passed. Um, uh, my condolences. Uh, thank you. She she always talked about um, you know persevering and keep and keep going and being like really authentic. Um, and one thing that she she said that really stayed with me is you should really do what you love to do because at the end of the day it's going to be a lot of work anyhow. So why put a lot of work into something that you don't want to do? Um, and so, uh, you know, I would just encourage people to, you know, follow their passion and to keep going. And, uh, and, and one step always leads to the next step. Um, and just take the step. Just even if it's that first baby step, just do it. Um, not to sound like a Nike ad, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, true words, man. And uh, yeah, I just want to say I appreciate you for talking to me today like uh like i mentioned a lot of people were excited that i get to chat with you today so i'm super excited to share this and the new song and uh for people listening i'm gonna put the audio on the audio versions i'm gonna play a piece of the song as well and uh yeah sean i just hope you enjoy the rest of your media day and maybe we can catch you up on your next project i love that thank you so much for having me on Thanks once again to Sean Andrews for hanging with us today. Like we mentioned, 
His new single, Ride Like Thunder, is available. Streaming everywhere. Also follow him on Spotify, YouTube, Keep in the Loop of the new album and the next single coming out that he mentioned. Also, what an honor it was to reflect on his perspective of 30 years of Days and Confused. This is one of those special talks and it's always cool to get the first-hand perspective of somebody who lived and was involved in such an iconic film or song or any sort of piece of art. I really feel blessed to being able to do these segments and maybe we'll catch Sean again down the road. But before we go, I can't leave without thanking all you legends on the Patreon page. First up, biggest shout out to Mike Carniello of the Testing with Mike YouTube channel. Subscribe to that. Also, the amazing Amanda McKnight of Top 10 Nerd. Your boy, Ryan Watkins of Ryan Radio. The wonderful Jenny Potter. The legendary Devin McBride. Ryan frickin' Campbell. My favorite soul singer, Sabre. And last but not least, Francis Coffer, a.k.a. my mom. If you want to support the show, also get a shout-out at the end of each and every episode. You can go to patreon.com slash thecreativeandbalance. And on top of that, you get each and every one of these episodes early, raw and uncut, right when I'm done the Zoom call. No edits. I just post it there. You can see all the little banter beforehand and after and maybe even things that I cut out. That's all for you on the Patreon page. And I appreciate y'all. And also by supporting patreon.com slash the creative imbalance. At the end of the day, you can go to bed at night. Just knowing you're a badass motherfucker who supports raw, uncut, independent media. And nobody can take that away from you. You hear me? All right. Well, I got a lot of pre-recorded episodes I still need to release. Life's been a little crazy and uh, I'm behind on my posts. So expect a lot of content next week and I will catch you real soon.